This is a savoy cabbage. It's the wrinkly brain looking one. We can use savoy, we can use green cabbage or red cabbage because we're going to make some braised cabbage with some bacon, onions, some chopped garlic, and some caraway seeds. This is a great side dish for Thanksgiving. Goes great with pork, whether it's a roasted rack or like a braised shank. Um, amazing with duck. Even I could make a good case for it for being uh, delicious with some beef stew. Let's braise some cabbage. All right, I've got, basically I have three slices of bacon here. They're just cut in half. And I'm gonna go lengthwise once, and then we're gonna dice this up pretty small. I want it to almost kind of disappear into the cabbage. You know, I don't want the bacon to be the, the main event. I want the cabbage to be kind of the main event. But it should all kind of mix together. There we go, so we got about three slices of bacon. And what do you say? Cut into little, can I pull them apart? Get a few here, why not? Like little pieces. All right, an onion. I don't need this whole thing. Eh. I'm gonna use a little less than half of it. And I want my onion to kind of disappear. So I went three across and then we're gonna slice this thin. How thin? No more than an eighth of an inch, I would say. Pile of onion over here. And got to have some garlic. Give it a good smash. And I'm just going to go across it once. A little garlic. And for what I have here, this little cabbage, I'd call this a little one. Um, I'm just gonna do half. Save that for something else, house salad probably. Um, there's a big core in the middle. So I'm gonna just kind of take the, the core out. That's garbage. And then we're gonna go, we don't need this small, but I do want kind of like a, a, a type of dice that's gonna fit on a spoon once it's cooked. So I'm gonna go across in maybe pinky width slices. And then we can dice it from there so that maybe they look like they're about half inch dice. I mean, we're going to braise this. It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be similarly sized. That's it. Our knife work is done. Let's go in a pot with the bacon. We're going to render it down and get it crispy. Okay, we got a little three quart, three quart pot. And we'll go bacon. We're going to crispy it up. I'll probably drain off some of the fat. And then garlic and then onions. Cook it all down and then we'll go cabbage. Uh, pretty simple thing. This doesn't take a very long time. I wouldn't worry about doing this in advance if you're cooking dinner right now. This could be kind of more of a, while your steak is resting, while your potatoes are roasting, that kind of deal. Okay, so we're gonna get this bacon going. It's on high heat right now. I wanna get it rendering out its fat, but I'm actually gonna cover it and, and let it cook down. And then we'll, you know, get it crispy. This is a project that shouldn't require like a ton of babysitting. Now we're going with cabbage and I said we can use savoy, we can use red, we can use green. You could also go cauliflower. Like if you wanted to like cut up some cauliflower florets, like, like I don't know, tip your pinky, like pretty small. Uh, cauliflower would also work here. It is a cruciferous vegetable. So I've got some good fat rendering out. I'm gonna let it go a little bit more, cook off some more of the liquid before I put the lid on it and just let this go on autopilot for a while on low heat. All right, I'm starting to get a little bit of golden brown edges here. I don't wanna turn this into like a grease splattery mess. So I'm gonna cover it. 
Nice even layer of bacon. Okay, bacon. We're going down to like number three and I'll see you in a little bit and it'll probably be crispy and ready to go. So we're just gonna go slow, cook the bacon, render it out, make it crispy. Okay, bacon. It's crispy, it is rendered. And now you can hear me. Um, I'm gonna drain off this fat. I'm actually not gonna save it. Uh, sometimes I do if it's, actually I always do when it's the bacon that the butcher makes. So I'm just gonna discard this into a can so that I have this left. Now you can see there's some fat in here and I want that because I'm gonna use it to cook out my garlic. I'm back on high heat and if you look at what I've got going on here, I've got my garlic over on one side. And I'm just gonna, you know, color up this garlic and then we'll throw all the onions in and go onions next. I don't want to mix all the garlic into the bacon because then I'm not gonna get uh, I'm not gonna be able to focus on getting good color on the garlic if I mix it with the bacon. Nothing like the smell of bacon and garlic cooking together in the house. This is like one of the smells where the kids come out and they're like, what are you making? And I tell them, oh, I'm making braised cabbage. And they're like, oh, I thought we smelled garlic and bacon. I was like, you do. So even though I drained pretty much all the fat out, like there's still plenty of fat here. If I were to leave all that in, it's going to make this cabbage very greasy. And I don't want that. All right, getting a little bit of light golden brown color. Just killed my heat just so I don't end up like browning up my garlic too much. And my heat is still off. I'm just like using the onions to kind of cool the pan off a little bit just so I'm not, you know, killing the, killing the garlic. And you can hear it, you know, there's a lot of residual heat in there. You get some fresh cracked black. To taste, whatever that means to you. And on, on its own, just as it is, this is good. This is like amazing and delicious. But just the addition of caraway seeds really take this, takes us to another place. And I'm just shaking in what I feel like I'm going to enjoy with the cabbage. Um, what do I have here? I would guess maybe two teaspoons. All right, so my pan, you can hear it, it stopped sizzling, it's cooled off. Do I need this? Maybe. And now I want to melt down the onions. I want to get them tender because if I were to put the cabbage in now, I'm going to have raw onions and cooked cabbage. So I've got it on high heat. We'll get it sizzling. And I'm not shooting for like caramelized onions. I just, I just want tender onions. Covered. I'm going to turn it down from six, which is my high, down to like between low and two to get them kind of like tender, um, you know, covered and steaming out like this. So we'll check back in a couple minutes. I'll show you what we've got before we add the cabbage. Okay. Onions. They've been cooking for probably three minutes. And they're looking nice and tender. And I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, but if you have, you'll know that I haven't seasoned these with any salt yet. I'm going with just the bacon as my salt for now. Um, you can see the onions are, you know, translucent and they're tender. They're, you know, kind of tangling up on each other. This is good. I'm going to turn up my heat all the way back up to six. Welcome to the pot cabbage. Here we go. And 
Now I am going to add some salt to it. A little pink Himalayan, kosher is fine too. I'm not going to go too crazy with the salt because there is bacon to account for. And it's going to feel really dry right now. It's going to feel like I need to add liquid or something. What I'm going to do is mix everything together and I'm going to cover it for a little bit and get the cabbage to release a bunch of its own liquid because there's plenty of moisture in, in the cabbage. I could see adding like a little splash of sherry vinegar here, like kind of brighten things up a little bit. You could even add like a tablespoon of like some Dijon mustard. That would be cool too. Um, turn it down just a little bit. So it's on number four and yeah, I'm stirring it cause I'm trying to like make sure that my onions and my bacon are not like overly caramelizing on the bottom because they're going to try and do that. And I'm beating it up a little bit. So the salt's going to help draw out some of the moisture of the cabbage, but so is like the agitation that I'm creating by just kind of stirring it around, beating it up. And you can hear it like coming up to heat, starting to sizzle. And uh, you know, with the Savoy cabbage, even with like a green or red cabbage, there's going to be thicker pieces of like, here's like a good example of like a vein in the leaf. And then there's going to be thinner, like outer leaf portions. Here's a good example. Come here, you come with me like this. So you're going to have some different textures here and you'll probably have like some pieces that are softer and some pieces that have just a little bit more bite. That's cool. I'm into that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't cook this until it is mush. I want it to have a little bit of texture to it. All right. So I've just been stirring around, kind of beating it up a little bit for a couple minutes here. I cover it, turn it down to low, and then I'll come back in a I'll come back in three minutes, and I'll show you what I got. Okay, it's been it's been like five minutes, but as you can see, everything's under control. It's cruising on like low, and I'm gonna turn it up. And I'm going to give it a little taste. Um, I can feel that like there's a lot of like really tender pieces here. I'm not looking to go until it's mush. That tastes nice. Um, if you were going to make this ahead of time, you could cool this off on a sheet tray with parchment paper. You know, cool it off and then refrigerate it and then you can reheat it. Um, it'll have a little less texture, but that's okay. I mean, it is cabbage. Um, or, like right now, mashed potatoes, cabbage, beef stew. That's what I'm doing with this. Um, I'm just going to cover this and let it sit right here, and then I'll start plating everything up. Or you can go family style, and my cabbage will be ready to go. And I can always, you know, pop the burner back on if I want to get it extra hot for the plate for the table. Um, but it's tender. I like the salt in it. Um, and there's just, there's some of these little funny pieces, like thick guys. And they have the kind of crunch that I would expect with like, like a properly cooked piece of broccoli or cauliflower where it's, it's cooked through, but it's got a little bite. And then when you get that contrast of like the more cooked leaves, um, it's, it's in more interesting for your mouth that way. All right, so I just cranked it up. I'm getting a little bit of heat on here. I'm turn it off. And then I'm going to go plate some stuff up. So tonight, this is going with slow braised beef shoulder, grass-fed beef shoulder from Stanger Ranch, and some mashed potatoes. I'll give you some links to that, too, for how to make the best mashed potatoes you've ever had with cream and butter, and then how to you know, make a slow braised uh, ragu of beef shoulder, beef stew. Uh, which I think is kind of a fundamental thing. Having portions of beef stew in the freezer is an amazing thing. Anyway, let's go to the plate. Mm -hmm.